to start. Um, can I welcome everybody to the July meeting of the Combined Authority? Um, pleased to see so many members of the public here, that's great. Um, before getting into the detail of the meeting, just a few housekeeping points as usual. Can I please remind everybody that all mobile phones should be turned to silence for the duration of the meeting and to ensure that everybody in the chamber can hear the debate. Uh, can I please ask that members and those presenting the board use the microphones provided and to speak instantly, please. And finally, as, as usual, the meeting is going to be filmed by officers from the Combined Authority and will be available on the Mosley Council YouTube channel later today. So, um, those are the opening remarks. If straight into the agenda, uh, item one is apologies for absence. Uh, are there any apologies for absence, Sanjay? Yes, Chair. Sure. Apologies to be received from uh, St. Helens representatives, Councillor Grunwald and Councillor Bowden. We've also had apologies from the, our associate members, West Lancashire and White. Okay, thank you. Uh, item two, declarations of interest. Have any declarations of interest been received? No, Mr. Okay, thank you. Item three, minutes of the last meeting of the Combined Authority held on the 19th of June. Uh, the minutes are in your pack, pages 1 to 10. Can I ask, are these approved as a correct record of that meeting? Is that agreed? Thank you very much. Um, item 4, the potential devolution of powers and funding to the Liverpool City Region. I'm simply going to move that we note this report. Is that agreed? Thank you. Uh, item 5 is the International Festival for Business 2016 Local Growth Fund approval. And John, if you're going to take us through this, please. Yes, um, just very briefly, members will be aware that the funding for the IFP 2016 was included in the City Regions Growth Plan. Uh, it's managed on behalf of the CA by uh, the Local Fishing and City Council. The business case for this has been submitted to the government, and this report is seeking formal approval to use five million the of funding that was earmarked for this purpose for exactly that purpose for the IFP. The original financial profile of this expenditure had all five million being uh, spent next year effectively in 2016. There's so much work that needs to be done in front of that. This report is also seeking approval to bring forward three million of the five million into the current financial year um, because that's effectively where public resources will be required. That can be managed by Mersey Travel, and it's a council body role, um, supporting the CA, and we've been having quite a lot of dialogue with Liverpool City Council to make sure that resources are available when they are needed. Um, there's a further recommendation that Liverpool Vision presents an update on progress and plans at an appropriate point this year so that um, there were progress on IFP for 2016 delivery. Also, just further to note that some of the things in the report have been removed because uh, well, for reasons of commercial confidence. Uh, those things obviously have been part of the, the business case that was submitted and approved. Um, in particular, the table 18 might be confusing because we include the financial information for that reason. Uh, that's all I was to say, but I'm happy to answer any points. Okay, thanks, John. Joe? Yeah, if, if, uh, I mean, Okay. 
we do that? Yeah, 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 yeah we'll do that. Yeah. Any other points on this? Okay, well, it's clearly a, um, a fantastic opportunity for us to showcase the, the city region. So, um, uh, really, we're just being asked to agree the recommendations uh, on page 15, um, A to C. Uh, are they agreed, members? Thank you. Okay, we now move on to item 6, Transport for the North um, July Updates. Uh, and I'm going to ask um, Liam Robinson to speak to this, please Liam, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Just a, a brief update for members with regards to the works of uh, Transport for the North. Uh, as members will be fully aware, the main objective of the city region um, in our involvement in Transport for the North has been about securing a new high-speed railway line going east to Manchester with a link onto the high-speed rail network. Um, practically, uh, how that's developing is that Transport for the North in the past month has signed a memorandum of understanding with both Network Rail and High Speed 2 Limited to start the process of looking at all of those railway options across the North of England, and specifically to the city region there will be a Liverpool area regional study which looks at not just the current and future demand and the network capacity that we've got, but crucially starts to flesh out some of the detailed options of that new line going uh, to our east towards Manchester as the first part of what uh, people colloquially know as HS3 with a link onto high speed uh, 2. Effectively, um, answering our kind of requirements, a high speed rail both east, west and north, south. Um, so that um, is beginning and uh, those options start to develop and I'll report those back to the combined authority accordingly. Um, whilst I'm just mentioning rail, it would be remiss of me not to mention some of the concerns we've had about uh, the Secretary of State's recent announcement with regard to network rail and the pause of a number of infrastructure projects in particular electrification across the country. Um, particularly of concern to ourselves is the electrification from Manchester to Leeds, okay, whilst it doesn't directly impact on the city region as our electrification from Liverpool to Manchester and Wigan has already happened. Obviously uh, it does have a knock on effect for services that start in Liverpool and the city region and end up going east to Yorkshire and the east coast. Equally uh, we have concerns about um, within that pause how that might affect other projects that Network Rail is scheduled to deliver over the next few years that do affect the city region directly, things like Pine Street Capacity, Hotton Curve, McGold North, Newton the Willows, uh, to name a few. And at the moment we're involved in a number of discussions with Network Rail to gain greater clarity about where those things are up to, but crucially continue to continue to impress the case that uh, not only does things like electrification of trans Pennine routes need to happen, so do all of those local schemes that Network Rail need to deliver in the city region as well. And we will continue to push that accordingly. Quickly mentioning about roads, uh, Transport for the North has also signed a memorandum of understanding with Highways England, looking at the detailed roads packages um, that Transport for the North is proposing, particularly for the city region. That will include smart motorways from junction 10 to 12 of the M62, and junctions 21A to 26 of the M6. And one of the things that we're particularly pleased about is the operational director of Transport for Portland Council has been asked to leave that work stream, not just for the city region, but for the whole of the north of England. So a great opportunity to make sure that one of our key officers is directing that work stream uh, for roads right across the north of England. Equally, freight is of vital importance to the city region and to the whole transport for the North work stream. And one of our key demands throughout the process has been the local city region leads on freight because of the importance of Superport and the whole transport and logistics industry with regard to freight to our um, to the North and particularly our city region. As the lead body for freight, uh, we're in the process of starting to procure a New York Northern Freight and Logistics Study on behalf of Transport for the North. Um, and as that procurement uh, progresses, we will update members accordingly. Uh, particularly, we focus on the multimodal infrastructure that we need to get the maximum in, in, impact from Superport. Equally, we've been very keen to make sure the private sector um, requirements and demands are listened to within the process. So, a private sector reference group has been set up for the freight strategy. Uh, very pleased to say that a friend of the city region, Bernard Malloy, who chairs our Superport committee will be chairing that um, private sector reference group for the whole freight strategy for the North of England. So another 
a good opportunity for the city region. Um, last week saw the budget, and the Chancellor of the Exchequer announced in his budget a £30 million funding package for transport for the north. And that's particularly around uh, building up transport for the north's capacity, and particularly its executive officer group. Um, so as part of that, that will lead to the appointment of Chief Executive for Transport for the North and an independent chair. Equally, as part of the budget announcement, uh, the Chancellor stated that Transport for the North is going to become a statutory body. This is a very good opportunity for the North of England because it means that in perpetuity there should be a strategic transport body for the whole of the North of England for the long term. There's also a challenge within it as well to make sure that uh, Transport for the North is not just established but actually is accountable and driven by the north of England and doesn't become uh, a branch office of the Department of Transport that happens to be based somewhere in the north of England. So a good opportunity, but one that we'll continue to push to make sure it has the right outcome as a statutory body for the north of England. Equally, in terms of longer term finance for transport for the north, uh, we've put a letter into uh, the Chancellor to inform the comprehensive spending review calling for a multi-million pound multi-year settlement actually to do all the detailed project work of those transport infrastructure projects that we need to have developed uh, to have that kind of maximum impact of this whole strategic agenda. That's a brief update of where we're up to transport for the North. Obviously more than happy to take any questions accordingly. Thanks, Sylvia. Any points, Joe? Just comments we've got questions uh,
further concern in me now is the crossrail to is being applied for. And I think that is something that's really concerned to us because that now sounds like a lot of pressure on that. And that will be muddying the horse and we really do need to, uh, to make sure that the businesses are behind it. So put the pressure, as much pressure as we can on the government. Because I think if we don't, we're going to lose out the game of council itself. Because it's already worth these very good this words that they're coming out saying give them this, give them that. Thanks, Rob. Robert? Yeah, just two, 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 two commentary first of all. Thank you. Excellent to see this key division is from the same region and then it is a vital post for the more than the first community. Preventing our expertise, but also involving the uh, key elements of the future. On the point made by, by the chairman there, I think um, what we will write is I think vital that this is the sector comes more strongly and clearly making those points to come This is not theoretical, this is about investment. And also economic growth. And it's, it's not just the East West story, which is like this Line Street or the Willows, equally important. So we're right behind the big development and very strong lesson. Okay, any, any other points anybody wants to make? Okay, so. Um, Excuse me, Chairman, could, could, could people put the microphone closer oh, to the mic? Yeah, sorry, sorry folks. Here, yeah. When you speak into the microphone, could you put, just put a bit closer to you? Robert, do you just want to say that again? Sorry, it's okay, I got it, but it could just be from now on. Apologies for that. Apologies for that. Okay. Right, so any other points, members? Okay, so we've got recommendations on page 23, and then there's an additional recommendation about the joint letter between the combined authority and the LEP around the delay to these infrastructure projects. So are we okay to agree those recommendations plus the additional one? They agreed? Okay, thank you. Right, okay, so we now go to uh, employment and skills. So item uh, seven is skills for growth funding. Um, and uh, I'm going to ask Sue Jarvis to speak to this, please, Sue. Got any questions or just make any points on this report? 
No, if not, then um, we've got recommendations on page 27. Are they agreed? Thank you. Okay, um, second report on employment skills is item 8, skills capital investment fund update. And Sue, you'll know, take us through this again, please.
Okay, you can, we've got the recommendations, um, colleagues, on page 35. Um, can we agree those recommendations? Are they agreed? Thank you very much. Okay, we move now on to European issues. Item 9 uh, is alignment of European governments to local city regions, uh, governance structures. And, and Mike Paley, will take us through this, please, Mike. Thank you, Chair. Uh, members will be aware that they have received a series of reports of recent months <coughs> that have uh, broadly covered the fact that the, the overall management of the programme going forward will be undertaken by CLG and that our own local influence has been produced. Uh, the scrutiny panel of the CA also considered the, the role of the CA in terms of European funding and suggested we need to look at the governance structures and the CA itself um, at the last meeting suggested that we would do a governance review by the back end of this year. However, uh, CLG has issued calls for projects and there is a need to maintain the structures we've got to actually maximise our short-term influence over the programme. So essentially, this paper is designed just to maintain the current arrangements while we undertake a, a more full review of what's needed in response to CLG's uh, greater influence over the, over the overall process. So section five outlines the existing arrangements, which is proposed that continue, while section seven also updates on the technical assistance bit. So we believe from CLG that our outline application has been uh, well received, although needs further work. So over upcoming months, we'll be doing that further work with CLG to secure the technical, uh, technical assistance resources that we believe are required <coughs> in the city region. So the recommendations are to endorse the suggested approach the continued input into CLG on an interim basis, request regular updates on progress, uh, support the process around assessment of strategic fit, and that is an, a, a live process at this point in time, and the next paper relates to, to, to that process. Note the updates on the TA, uh, and also we need to nominate uh, an alternate member from the CA to sit on the EC committee. Okay, any, any points or questions on this report? There's, a, there's just a particular um, one then on, on recommendation E, we need to nominate an alternate member from um, this body to join the ESIF committee. Uh, Rob? Okay. Is that seconded? Yeah, thanks, Andy. Okay. Go on, Joe, then. Uh, a decision. The, we received the terms of reference from CLG on what the role of the ESIP committee is now within the CLG managed process. When scrutiny looked at this, uh, and the CA itself looked at this, they, they expressed um, not a dissatisfaction, but a need to maximise our influence. So we, we, we said that by October we'd look at the processes to make sure we have the most influence we could. But, as was, as was the case, just before uh, Herder, um, CLG released calls for actual projects. So they should the cost projects. At this moment in time, the ESIF committee is being asked to recommend just a strategic recommendation of what projects should continue. So we need to maintain the current structure to make sure we've got some influence at this point in time. I mean, I think we've said many times, um, sort of regrettably, our, our influence locally has been downgraded as the programme has effectively been nationalised in the hands of CLG. And we've, Robert, you and I have written to yes. thus protest um, with, with, with not much uh, uh, comfort coming back. I think we need to keep on pushing the case, possibly as part of our discussions around devolution. We went to court, indeed, yeah. yeah. 
So I think, I think we need to keep on pr pressing this case. Uh, but the, there is an, an interim position which might um, sort of set out. So, uh, recommendations on page 45 and um, on item E, Barry, Barry Grumwald's been removed and seconded. So, can we agree those recommendations? Yeah. Is that agreed? Thank you very much. Okay, item 10, the City Region Blue Green Economy ERDF Investment Framework. Um, and Alan Welby, Alan, will you take us through this, please? Thank you, Chair. Uh, so, Mike talked about the role of uh, the Visa Committee in, in delivering a strategic fix. And the, 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 the document, the investment framework we've got there, uh, is to give guidance and a framework for how to take that into ERDF investment forward. Members will know that the ESIF strategy has five portfolios, and this relates to the blue-green portfolio. What do I mean by blue-green? Blue, I suppose, relating to our maritime, unique maritime location, and assets and opportunities, and green uh, opportunities linking to the low-carbon agenda. Um, in order to take forward this, uh, this uh, investment framework, a, a task of leadership advisory group was set up, um, which brought together partners from across the city region, chaired by Gilbert Ben Tobin, who is a, a member of the ESIC committee that brought together HEFD local authority representation as well. Um, the allocation in this pot is actually quite small, 15 million over seven years is not a huge amount of money um, for us to play with. So it's really important the money we have, we use effectively, smartly, and is catalytic rather than activity that can, to, can cover everything. So um, the framework then is quite important to make sure that we, we um, put the money in the right way. Um, it's important that you look at this as soon as possible because, um, as Mike said, there are calls at the moment around the low carbon agenda. So this investment framework should help guide investment decisions. The actual document itself um, was drawn up by the committee, and, and I think it's a, a relatively well written, um, robust, uh, and clear document. And um, I recommend reading it and going through it in detail. If you, if, if you don't have the time for that, then. I'd say that the two key pages of the executive summary, and particularly on page 60, or perhaps on page 3 of the document, there's a table there which outlines um, the, 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 four, the five investment priorities and where we put the money, the kind of generic activity allocated to that. Um, for, on my side, I, I, I suggested that the, the, the report should be slightly more strengthened in terms of the blue agenda, particularly the blue economy side of things. But I think as a, as a framework to go forward, I would recommend that my authority endorses this um, framework. Okay, thanks, Alan. Any any questions or comments on this paper? Okay, uh, so we're just being asked to endorse the um, the investment framework. Uh, is that agreed? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. And finally, item eleven. Um, the agenda is uh, appointments to the combined authority. And Angela, can you just take us through this, please? Uh, thank you, Chair. At uh, the annual meeting of, of the combined authority in June and last month, um, the combined authority made a number of appointments from nominations received from the constituent councils in relation to its, its committees. But there were two outstanding um, nominations uh, awaited, and uh, we have received those now, so we're asking the combined authority to appoint those members to the scrutiny panel. Uh, in the case of uh, Nosey Council, we did already have um, a nomination, Councillor Marie Stewart, and we now have a second nomination, Councillor Eddie Connor. And in the case of Septon Council, we did already have uh, a nomination, Councillor Michael Bryan, and we now have a second nomination, Councillor Nina Killen. So we are asking the Command Authority to appoint Councillor Connor and Councillor Killen to the scrutiny panel. Okay, can we agree those nominations? Agreed. Okay, thank you very much. I've not been informed of any other urgent items, so can I just thank you for your attendance and contribution to the meeting of the uh, Combined Authority today and remind you that the next meeting uh, will be at 11.30 a.m. on Friday, the 21st of August. Uh, so that's the end of the business. Thank you for your attendance. I declare the meeting closed. Thank you.